Imagine having a line down the street, hundreds of people outside of your streetwear storefront, willing buyers with money in hand ready to purchase your new garments. People that have waited overnight and aren't afraid of the inconvenience of coming and waiting so long, many hours in line for your clothing. Well, this is exactly what the director, David Lynch, was able to do with his film. And I'm going to share the story of how he did it. And maybe we can learn something about streetwear and fashion and how you can do a similar thing in your own brand. You are listening to the Street Cred Podcast. I'm Elijah Delport. And this is the show, helping you turn your streetwear side hustle into a full-time career. Well, today, yes, we're talking about David Lynch. And happy Tuesday to everyone. FYI, this podcast is releasing daily or weekdays at 7 a.m. AEST. So I appreciate you tuning in. I mean, I don't, I, I really want you to know that I do appreciate the few people that tune into. The, I know this is a very niche topic and niche show. I don't even know if it has the potential to reach hundreds and thousands of people. It's not like a topic that many, many people are interested in is streetwear fashion. However, for the few that are, I hope this is providing some sort of value. And so today we're going to go get into the story and I'd love to tell it to you um, with the, like, yes, it is in the film industry. However, there are, there is a lot that we can learn from this in the fashion industry. And I'm going to reveal all of that to you at the end. So let's get into it. So what actually happened? So David Lynch is a famous American film director. He is known for creating surreal films. He's not in the mainstream. He's not the blockbusters that you'll see in the cinemas. However, if you are a film student like myself, you will know of his films. Um, he's created such films as A Razorhead, um, Mahalan Drive, uh, Twin Peaks, and some others. Um, and he is known, like some people love him and others hate him. And so we're going to be going back to his first film that he ever made. It's called A Razorhead. And this was his debut film. He was a young director in Los Angeles, and he was very excited to release this. He's just out of film school. He spent all of his cash on this film, and he thinks it's going to change the world, the, the world of cinema. And so he contacts all of these local cinemas around Los Angeles. And there's only one cinema that will play his film. I mean, this is a director that's never actually released anything to the world. He has no proof that anyone's going to like his work. And it's a big risk for a cinema to take on this film. And so, you know, he, well, he takes the opportunity where it is, except there's a catch. This cinema will only play his film at midnight. Okay, why at midnight? Because nobody watches at midnight. The cinema is empty. And they don't want to play a risky film at a time when people are going, probably going to see it. And so they say, well, David, if, if your film's truly that good, then we can play it at midnight and people will show up. And they probably, I bet they walked away scoffing, laughing, expecting nobody to show up. And it's funny because that's exactly what happened. He, the film played at midnight every night during the week and nobody came. The first night it was David Lynch and his family, maybe some friends, supporters, but really that's not enough to sustain a business. Or, well, for him, it's his art. And it might be a similar case with you, that you have a streetwear brand and you maybe have some friends and family supporting what you're doing. However, it, it dawns on you that in reality, that is not enough to sustain what you're doing. If you want to grow this to where you envision your brand going, you're going to have to start reaching beyond your friends and family, your inner circle. It's going to have to start reaching those who are on your outer circles and who are absolute strangers to what you're doing. And so David Lynch, like you, was in a similar position. And it got him really down. And so he decided something needed to change because this wasn't going to work by himself, by itself. It wasn't going to work just by having the movie play and people show up to it. Because... I mean, that already wasn't working. And so I think this shows us an important lesson that if it's not working, it needs to change. And there's, it's, it's a tough balance between persistence and also accepting failure or accepting defeat. And accepting defeat sometimes looks, I believe it looks like, trying something else or changing the strategy or focusing on what is working. And that's a really tough lesson. David Lynch had to decide, well, 
it's not working. So me being persistent as simply playing this over and over and over and over again isn't going to suddenly change something. And I think that that's the other side of the coin for persistence that isn't spoken about so much. So we decided we need to make a change. We need to get people talking about this film. Our marketing efforts need to go beyond this, right? And so this is where we get to the balance between art and marketing or art and business. His art was his film, except his film by itself wasn't going to talk. It wasn't going to talk about itself. And so in order to get his already great film in front of people, he had to focus on the marketing. And your your clothing designs might be in a similar place. You've got fantastic designs. There's something different, revolutionary, something that people haven't seen before. However, however they're not going to talk about themselves. And so that's where the marketing comes in. It is an absolutely essential element. It can mean the difference between your, your good garments, your well-designed, good quality garments, going far or falling flat on their face. So Dave, David Lynch is at this crossroads. What am I going to do? He, he decides we need to get people talking about it, and he does this very simple yet possibly effective thing. He says, we're going to create badges, and the badges are an exclusive item for anyone who comes and sees the film will get this badge. They can pin it on the shirt, and it says, I've seen it. And that's what happened. So his friends and his family came out again, and there he was. And after the film, he said, thanks for coming, you know, it's 1.46 a.m. It's a one, one hour, 46, 46 minute movie. It's 1.46 a.m. Everyone gets walks away with their badge and they walk on home. And the next day, they walk out of their house with their badge. You know, it's an exclusive item. You create some a bit of desire around it, a bit of excitement. All of a sudden, people started asking the friends and family on the streets as they were wearing the badge. What do, you know, I've seen it. What have you seen? Because that's what the badge said on it. It said, I've seen it. People asked, what have you seen at the bus stop? at the traffic lights, just walking by, F other friends, you know, beyond the circle, they start asking, what have you seen? And then here we go. Here's the conversation started. Yeah, I saw David Lynch's new movie, Eraserhead. Oh my goodness. It was amazing. You need to go and see it. It's only showing at this one cinema in LA, midnight only, be there. And so before you know it, the midnight session at this cinema in Los Angeles starts to fill up, right? At first, it's just a few people in the middle row. And then you, then it gets a little bit bigger, maybe a couple more rows, and then a couple more rows, then half the cinema, then three quarters, then a full cinema. And before you know it, there is a line going down the street of hundreds of people that want to see this film that everybody is watching. David Lynch had done it. He'd already created a good film. All he needed was the, the marketing aspect, something that people were going to talk about. And he created the in-group, right? And by creating the out-group, actually, he created the in-group. And the way he did that was by giving an exclusive item to those who'd experienced this film. And so the takeaway from this is the importance of having a community. Not only a community, but an in-group. Right, if, if everyone, and an in, I said it before, an in-group implies there is an out-group, right? So not everyone can be a part of it. You need to define who is not a part of your thing in order to have an in-group. Because if David Lynch was just giving out these badges willy-nilly, everyone can see it. Everyone's seen it. I was like, no, no, they haven't. Only people who've actually seen the film get an I've seen it badge, right? So that means everyone else is excluded. So people shy away from excluding people from their marketing when really that is the key to having an in-group, to having effective marketing. Have Effective marketing is, is, is exclusion. Effective marketing is exclusion. So my question for you, who is not in your group? Who's not a part of your thing? Who hates your thing? Who's never coming to your thing? That's, a, that's beautiful. And the reason that's beautiful is because if you have those people, you have an in-group. And it's in defining the in-group that you make what you have desirable, right? So I'm not saying you have to go and give people a badge. I mean, have an in-group and have an out-group and know who those two people are. And in order to have an in-group, in order to create something that people desire to be a part of, you need to define very specifically who that in-group is. And it's not just people who wear your clothing. Right? The clothing is the, the badge, the equivalent of a badge for whatever your in-group is. 
It's it, it's got to it has to be within a specific belief, culture, ethos, lifestyle, ideology. That is your in group. People who believe in that vision, who live that out. That is what we can learn from David Lynch's debut film and its and its success, A Razor Head. Look, please go search up the story, learn more about it. Watch the film A Razor Head if you're into surreal film. It's kind of weird and creepy, but you know it's worth watching. Um, it's one of, in my opinion, the greatest films of all time. And look, thanks for listening to this episode of Street Cred. I really hope this was helpful. And look, if it was, I have a lot more resources like this on access for free for brand owners. Um, and one of those includes the link in the description, which will take you to my community. It has 97 active, motivated streetwear entrepreneurs who you can network with who you can speak with, ask questions to, get your questions answered, and stay motivated. The stuff that people are posting in there about their wins is going to make you work. It's going to make you want to work more. So if that's something that you desire, please join the community. It's 100% free. Um, And look, inside I've even put a streetwear marketing course. It's very um, simple. It's, It's just, you know, eight episodes or eight lessons all about how to market your streetwear brand. Um, so it's it's super valuable i hope but you ch- try it out and try it for yourself and let me know um but yeah look thanks for listening to this episode i'll see you or hit or i'll be in your ears or maybe i'll see you tomorrow for another one thank you <laughs>